Hi, I'm Robin and I work as a marine geophysicist for Wessex Archaeology. What this means is that I use geophysical data to look at submerged archaeology on the seafloor. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about one of the aspects of our archaeological assessments within the marine team and that is of a detailed bathymetric analysis. Bathymetric data provides information on the seabed terrain and depth and it's used to map the seafloor. It's acquired using a multi-beam echo sounder, which is usually attached to the underside of a boat and emits like a fan of acoustic soundings or, or known as pings. The time it takes for these pings to travel to the seabed and back can be used to calculate the depth of the seabed. This creates a point cloud across that area of the seabed. This data, we then grid it or, or bind um, to an appropriate size based on kind of like the needs of the assessment and the amount of data acquired in order to create a digital terrain map or a DTM. So this large area has been gridded to a 10 metre bin size and as such the undulations and bedrock outcrops of the seafloor can be seen clearly and we can undertake landscape studies from this. Um, however, this really isn't a high enough resolution for an assessment of archaeological objects and, for example, as this is such a large data set, we would divide this up into smaller areas and grid it to a higher resolution. A uh, bin size of a metre is acceptable, but half a metre or higher is preferred. Um, and when conducting a detailed archaeological bathymetric analysis, the highest possible resolution is used. This wreck is broken and partially buried, but as a significant portion still remains like proud of the seabed, um, it's likely that this data can be cleaned up in order to make a really accurate model by looking at the point cloud. There are some errant points dotted about, so these ones can be fish or seaweed, um, as well as some of these areas that appear duplicated. Uh, these are likely the result of some vessel movement, and at this stage we would look to process the data further in order to edit this out. Using the point cloud, we can also see if the software has removed any points that it believes are errors, but that we think should remain, so we can add these bits back in. And it's not only the main body of the wreck that we'd assess, but also any surrounding debris, as you know, some of the ones that we can see here. I mean, the smaller and flatter the objects are against the seabed, the trickier it is to edit, particularly with any degree of accuracy. But even creating an individual point cloud for it can help it stand out so you get a better understanding of the debris field surrounding the vessel. I mean, this process is largely subjective and we would combine it with other data types and ground truthing for greater accuracy, but this isn't always possible. Once happy that the editing is complete, this model can then be used for further analysis of the vessel. This may be for further archaeological work. Uh, for example, repeated surveys can pinpoint areas of degradation um, and to be debris burial or exposure and then some appropriate mitigation could be undertaken or it can be used for public engagement so everyone can see what's actually in our oceans. 